seeing a supercar in person is rare, but have you ever noticed when you see one in the wild, it always has either a Montana or Vermont plate? Why are these cars registered in these states? Are they tax havens? Are they good driving states? Are Vermont and Montana the only states like this? Well, join us as we figure out the reason supercars are registered in states the owner probably doesn't live in, and how that benefits them in the first place. I love license plates. Here in the US, every state has their own, so it makes it super easy to spot out-of-state cars. But what you might not have been aware of is that some of these license plates you were spotting were not on the up and up. In fact, most of the time when you see a supercar or RV with Montana plates, it's actually a rich person from a different state who does think they're better than you. You see, when you're making a major purchase, like a 3.3 million dollar Bugatti Chiron Sport, the sales tax can be quite a doozy. For example, if you lived in LA, you would have to pay about $315,000 in taxes and fees. Now, what if I told you that you could buy the same $3.3 million Bugatti and only pay a few thousand bucks in fees as long as you bought it in Montana? Is that something you'd be interested in? Of course it is. You could use that leftover $314,000 to buy more silk toilet paper or whatever rich people will spend money on. If I was rich, I buy flannel sheets. The reason for this is because Montana has no sales tax. Oregon, Alaska, Delaware, and New Hampshire are also tax free, but Montana is the best because they're the only state that doesn't require a physical inspection of the car. Montana also doesn't require emissions testing, so you can roll call without fear of government retribution. And all this means you can literally buy a car in Beverly Hills and tag it 1,274 miles away in Billings without the car setting tire outside of the 90210. <laughs> This doesn't sound very legal, does it? But you'd be surprised. While it is illegal to falsify the owner's address, there is nothing illegal about opening a shell company in Montana, purchasing a car or RV through that shell company, and operating it in another state. In fact, there are a bunch of companies in Montana that will help you do just that. Simply create an awesome fake name like Nolan Sykes's Cyclery and come up with a kick-ass slogan like we're psyched for Sykes's Sykes, and the service will take care of the rest of the stuff like mailing address and what have you for you. But just a word of warning, while this is technically legal, insurance companies are not fans of this method. A traditional auto insurer may refuse to pay a claim if they can prove that a car resides in a different area than that is listed on the auto policy. Speaking of insurance, sometimes people like to tag their cars in different states to save on premium. For example, if you live in New York, you'll be paying an average of $1,789 but if you tag your car in Vermont or New Hampshire, you'll only be paying about $1,100 for insurance. Smart. Another reason some people plate their cars in other states has to do with emission standards. Say you want to buy your Uncle Ronnie's used C7ZR1. Now, Uncle Ronnie is the type of man who likes restaurants that allow peanut shells on the floor and exhaust systems that sound kick ass. That's led him to delete a few things from his exhaust system, which may cause the car to fail a California emissions test. So what do you do? Simple, tag that biscuit in Vegas where the emission standards are lower and then drive it to California. Disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer, so maybe don't do that. Wow. And just so you know, this isn't some California thing. Someone in Pennsylvania can save money and drive a less polar bear friendly car if they tag it in Ohio. Or if you live in New Mexico, you can go to Texas. Or if you live in Hawaii, you actually, you're kind of screwed if you live in Hawaii, but at least the scenery is nice. So far, we've been focusing on out of state plates, but what about out of territory plates? Hmm? While it's definitely not as common to see plates from US territories like the US Virgin Islands, some of the coolest cars come from US territories. That's because you can import cars into territories that you can't import into the US. And here's the kicker, it's omega easier to import a vehicle from a US territory than another country. Mind blowing, right? Right now, the most common way to get a gray market car that doesn't meet US standards for crash tests, side marker lights, headlights, safety chimes, blah, 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 is to wait 25 years. We've done, I feel like, 10 videos on that subject. You could also modify that car to have all those things, argue that it is similar to an existing car in the US market, or apply for a show and display exemption, but all those options can be surprisingly more difficult than they sound. 
So what if you want to own an illegal car like a, I don't know, Land Rover Defender 110 in Oklahoma. You can either buy one that is over 25 years old and costs about 125 grand, or you can buy a relatively new one for 60 grand in the UK, then spend another 15 grand in shipping and importing fees to get that biscuit unicorn tagged in the US Virgin Islands. Not only do you save 50K, you also get an upgraded vehicle. It sounds like a very specific example. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. That's just an example. No one has done this. At this juncture, I just want to remind everyone that we here at Donut do not condone any illegal registering or insuring of vehicles. As a matter of fact, it should be pointed out that an attempt to skirt taxes, insurance premiums, and emission tests can really come back to haunt you. Imagine going through all the trouble of buying that Defender 110 and getting caught. Not only would you be facing some legal troubles, there's also a good chance that Johnny Law is gonna crush that Land Rover like it's a 94 Sunfire with terminal rust. And, and that would be heartbreaking. At the end of the day, plating a car with out of state plates or in extreme cases, out of territory plates may not be worth the risk or headache. But depending on the owner, the car, and the state of residency, some delicious juices just might be worth the squeeze. Oh, did you miss the holiday shipping deadline? Oh, no problem. Introducing Donut Digital Gift Cards. Put the numbers in the pewter, give it to your lovey dub, and he'll be rocking Donut by January. I'm gonna say it right now. If people paid their sales tax on that $3.3 million Bugatti, maybe our roads in LA wouldn't be so shitty. How about that? The one car that I would do that territory plate thing is the uh, Al the Alpine 110, the new one. It's like a rear engine French car, super sick. Might have to do that actually. Uh, be nice, see you next time.